All right, guys, the wait is over, and now I'm going to give you my complete system of training that I use with all of my athletes to increase performance. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so when it came down to organizing a system, I've been through so many different types of models of training when it comes down to, you know, whatever we needed to do to get the athletes ready. And so for me, having limited time with my athletes, only two, sometimes three times per week, I needed to come up with a specific method of training and a system that was gonna be conducive to get them to the goals that we wanted to accomplish and also improve on the overall abilities of the sport play. Now, obviously, if you guys have been following me on this channel, you know I work with a large amount of combat sport athletes, specifically mixed martial arts. And so I've worked with Dustin Poirier, Joanna and Jacek, Edson Barbosa, and I found out that even though these guys were elite and girls were elite, they didn't really have a structured system in place when it came down to strength and conditioning. So I had to formulate something that was going to help them get them to where they need to be, but also not overtrain them. So I started to come up with different types of training methodologies or training systems that was going to help them overall. We went through block periodization. I've been through linear. We did some daily undulation and all these periodization schemes may sound somewhat familiar. If not, go ahead and check them out. But what I come to realize was that everybody that I was training needed to be ready at all times because they were training all throughout the year. There was no off season. And even when there was an off camp or whatever time they were, they were done with their fights, they were actually helping teammates. So they had to be prepared and be ready at all times. So I came up with a system that I derived from what I used to train and how I train now, which is the conjugate system, which is a four day a week system. And it's more so famous by one of my mentors, Louis Simmons and Westside Barbell. And I decided to condense that. So instead of doing four days a week of training, we had to condense that to a two or three day a week system. And so what I ended up coming up with is the condensed conjugate approach. Now the overview of the condensed conjugate is a system of training that utilizes multiple methods and training stimulus to achieve athletic performance in limited time frames. Like I said, I only had about two to three times per week to train them. So we needed to make sure we were bringing up all these things at once. So the benefits of condensed conjugate, just like conjugate in general, is it provides all things to be brought up at, at once. It also allows for athletes to maintain progress year round. You're not detraining one aspect and training another. We're constantly keeping things up and just focusing on one particular stimulus at a time. We're increasing the ability to be ready at all times. Like I said, guys take fights on short notice. And we've also been able to see tremendous benefit with athletes such as high school football. I use condensed conjugate now with a lot of my athletes, especially in season. It's easy to auto-regulate. So again, if you have somebody coming in beat up or banged up or something like that from skills training practice, it's easy to change and audible out different methods of training based upon what you're seeing in the weight room. You wanna keep athletes interested in overall, you wanna keep them motivated because if they keep doing the same things over and over and over again, nine times out of 10, the adherence is gonna go down and they're not gonna be motivated to actually get into the weight room because they wanna do stuff that is interesting, that's entertaining, that's helpful, of course, but again, you wanna keep that stimulus moving and they like that constant variation, especially if they are a dopamine A-type individual. The layout. And we're gonna talk about the focus points. You got two types of the condensed conjugate. One is a two-day model, the other is a three-day model, and I'll go over both of them, all right? So with the two-day model, again, you're gonna work fast on half of the body, and then you're gonna work heavy or sub-maximal heavy on the other half. So I break it up into quadrants, upper and lower. There's gonna be constant variation with the max effort lifts and you're gonna get three week progressions or sub maximal three week progressions depending on if it's dynamic effort or heavy efforts. And I'll go into more detail in a minute. Your auxiliary exercises, you're gonna use that 80-20 rule. So you're gonna have 80% being auxiliary and supplemental lifts and then 20% is gonna come from your main lifts. The conditioning is always gonna be based upon individual differences and that's gonna be predicated towards their limitation. And we get that from our base testing and you can find out more details on that in my mentorship course, which I go into deep detail on how to actually get those limitations organized, set up, and then properly plan to execute the conditioning afterwards, all right? So check it out, link is down below if you wanna find out more details. So now that we went through all of this, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and give you a basic layout 
of day one and day two, and then on to the three day model with the day three to give you a structured program right then and there so that you can actually use this going forward in your training. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so here is a sample of a two day a week condensed conjugate model. And again, if you wanna find out more deep details and you are a coach or just somebody who wants to learn a little bit more about my methods and systems of training, again, check out my mentorship program. Yeah, I go through everything there. So it's a step-by-step -step. here. We only have so much time. So I am gonna give you a brief rundown of what we can do in the two-day model. So first things first, with day number one, we're gonna be focusing dynamic effort lower, maximal effort or heavy efforts upper on the two day a week. So this primarily is gonna be on a Monday or a Tuesday. The first thing that we're gonna go ahead and focus on is low level plyometrics. And then we're gonna increase that over a four to six week period going into higher plyometric movements, right? So looking at things like pogos, hops, skips, A series type of movements, you're gonna build up again to that higher level plyometrics over that four to six week period. Now, after you're done with your plyometrics, with the plyos, you wanna stick between sets of three to five and reps between two to four. And we call that explosive efforts. It's something that you want to focus on. Then you go right into your dynamic effort. So this would be something more speed strength orientated. So you can do things like trap bar pulls, sumo pulls, box squats, front squats, and different types of Olympic lifting variations. As long as the percentage of load is adequate for speed strength and the direct velocities are there too as well. So I like to go with the same concept what Louis did, which was 50 to 60%. And then we use 25 to 30% of band tension, depending on how strong or how powerful the athlete is. Now, this is not mandatory, so you don't have to use bands or chains, but it does help if somebody is highly explosive, it allows us to get that compensatory acceleration factor. So you're looking at 50 on week one, 55 week two, 60% week three, and then 25 to 30% of band tension too as well, if necessary. Now that's gonna be 1A, 1B, in between those sets are gonna be corrective. So any type of corrective exercise that the athlete is gonna need, maybe more hip extension, maybe more internal external rotation, something there, maybe even just a, a fact of just executing more activation of the muscles that are actually being utilized in the particular movement. So this is gonna be some sort of a regional movement or sometimes even a global movement. And I'll go into detail on kind of what that means in a second. Sets are gonna be 10 to 12 sets. Again, we're doing a large amount of sets because we want that volume at that particular percentage range, but the reps are gonna be low because we wanna keep speed high. So three to five reps. And if the reps are high and the velocity starts to drop off, lessen the reps and make sure that you're keeping the velocities high. So that's gonna be for dynamic effort. As far as correctives, that's gonna be around three, three total sets, three to five sets. Nothing more than that. Again, this is more for your workup type of sets and, and basically you don't need a huge amount of volume with the dynamic effort, you know, correlating with the correctives. So again, three to five sets on your correctives. Now you're gonna move on to the maximal effort upper or heavy efforts upper. This is gonna be something like a floor press, dumbbell hammer press, pen lay row, seal rows, actually a pull-up too as well, a weighted pull-up. Something like that, it's going to elicit some maximal or sub-maximal strength gains. We wanna constantly vary if you are gonna go 95 plus percent to just eliminate that neural overdrive and also give it a different tension gradient if the uh, percentages are very high. When you are doing max efforts, you wanna stick between three to four sets, one to two repetitions. At most, basically, you're gonna try to hit a new PR every week if you're trying to go for those maximal effort attempts. If you're going heavy efforts, and this is primarily based upon the experience level of the athlete, how well they have coordination inside of a particular lift, if they have that coordination and you know that they can strain, then definitely bring them up to a maximal effort. If not, if you need to work on coordination into inter and intramuscular coordination, I highly recommend you start with heavy efforts and then work your way up into a maximal effort. So the heavy efforts is gonna be 85 to 95%. You wave load up, which again, that would be 85 one week, 90 the next, 95 the next week, and then deload. Or if they feel good, if you think that they can get another rep in, try to go for an AMRAP and get a PR on the AMRAP. All right, so three to five sets, two to five repetitions there. Now, after you're done with your main lift, which is going to be somewhat of a regional lift that is going to give you maximal attempts. So when I say regional, I'm just breaking up the body into quadrants. Again, another supplemental lift is going to help increase 
the abilities of the maximal effort lift or the main lift that you're doing. And that can be something like a Z press, a close grip bench press, banded grapplers rows, right? That's good for gripping. That's good for upper back strength. It's also specific to combat sports in general, but you don't necessarily have to do this. You just got to find out what lift is going to help the main lift, right? So we call these testers and builders, right? So the tester lift is going to be somewhat of your maximal effort lift. The builder is going to be your supplemental lift. When you're looking at submaximal work, you're looking at an RPE eight to 10 and the sets and reps are going to be three to five and three to five. All right. So you want to keep the intensities high um, when you're talking about overall rate of perceived exertion. You want to keep it to where you can barely pump out that last rep so for the next three to two to three exercises are going to be auxiliaries. So those auxiliaries are going to be isolated movements. So you're going to work single joints. You know, that could be three to four sets, eight to 10 reps on both. Sometimes I like to go superset with this or giant set if you want to do three accessory exercises. This is all based upon your time frame and then also the ability to recover for your athletes. Particularly when you're talking about upper body accessory exercises or auxiliaries are going to be tricep extension variations, curl variations. I like to go hammer style, bigger bang for your buck, especially for athletes, shoulders and traps, right? So a lot of carries, isometric core movements too as well, or quasi isometric core movements are all going to be placed upon those auxiliaries. Again, you could do two to three there and then move on to your conditioning that is based upon your limitations. And primarily because it is a concurrent model, we want to keep it the same thing. So if we're going to do some conditioning, we want to keep it a lactic, quote unquote, or anaerobic, quote unquote, in that same time frame of what you're doing inside the weight room. So you don't throw the organism in two different directions. Now, I know if this sounds a little crazy to you, trust me, I have more details. Like I said, in the mentorship, you might want to check it out there if you want to get deeper into detail. But this is the general overview for day one. All right. So now with day two, you would just flip it. So now it would be a dynamic upper and a max or heavy effort lower. And then as far as the auxiliaries, again, it's going to be hamstring dominant, glute dominant, some extension for the posterior chain. I like reverse hypers, GHRs, uh, things like that that are going to allow for you to have more power and more overall strength for your compound movements. And then also that correlates over into the sport itself, whether that be football, baseball, basketball, soccer, and also combat sports, all these things are gonna be beneficial, especially when you're looking at it from a holistic approach. So systematically, this is the best thing that I've been able to to put towards my athletes programming. And as far as the system goes, it's very simple and it's direct. So that's the main thing. All right. So again, this is the two day model. The three day model is very simple. Again, you're going to do a maximal effort lift on the two days. And then the third day is going to be predicated to full body dynamic effort. I can go into detail on that, but that'll be a 20, 30, maybe even an hour long video. We don't have a whole lot of time for that. If you want to find out more details, go ahead, check out the mentorship. And if you have any more questions, hit the comments down below. And if you want me to do any more videos like this, make sure you let me know by hitting the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. This is what I do. And also hit the notification so you know when my videos come out. I'll see you again next time. Great.